Hey guys, and welcome to another Mosaic Crochet Project video. Today we are going to be making dragon egg pouches. Now this one is enormous. Um, this one also has a whole bunch of little baby ones, and these are the ones that I am going to show you how to make today. This one I gave a little sneak peek of in my last yarn video, and this is basically the pattern that we are using. This is the dragon scales. So in this video, I am going to walk you step by step to make this exact bag, so this size, nice and small, perfect for dice, perfect for gemstones, rocks, minerals, whatever you have. This is a fun little size for that. You can also adjust the pattern to make it as big as you want, so if you want to have a big hunk of giant dragon egg, go right ahead, because I'm actually going to use this one for all my manicure stuff after this video is done. Can't wait for that. Much needed. <laughs> and then I will also show you how to use other patterns in the same way from a round base. And as you can see, that one is really fun. So yeah, we'll head over to my other camera so we can get a little bit of a close up and I will show you first off what's hiding in these little bags and I will show you how to make these. I think every single video I've done I've used a different background because I'm still not really comfortable <laughs> with my office. Um, I'm thinking of actually doing a whole mural on this wall. These are just happen to be part of the next pattern that I have coming out, which is the Ankh pattern, and that includes a shawl and a wall hanging, which could also double as like a pillow panel, all sorts of things. But yeah, I'm still working on trying to get my office to be like YouTube ready because I'm so jealous of people that have really cool backgrounds and I'm just like not there yet, but we're getting there. <laughs> okay, uh, let's go make some dragon egg pouches. So before we get started, I want to give a very special shout out to Wisdom Check Creations, who was actually the inspiration behind making these little dragon egg dice bags. My friend Storm has been asking for this tutorial for a very long time, and I finally have a very good reason to make these little bags, because she made me a set of dice, which are absolutely gorgeous. Are these so, so pretty? And because she's so awesome, she actually sent me a second one right here. We have this big chunk, which is so gorgeous. I love, love how this came out. So cool. I will leave their information in the description of this video if you want to check them out. I would highly recommend it. And I absolutely need to talk about the yarn that I used for these two bags. I'm so excited about this. This is Evergreen Yarn Studio and I found them recently. Um, actually, I think Instagram was like, hey, I think you'll like this yarn dyer. And I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> So this is Purple Mountain's Majesty, um, and this is just, it. this ends up coming out absolutely it's just so cool with this kind of yarn. Um, yeah, this is, this is like dreamy, dreamy purple and pink, and it actually looks really cool in the skull pattern as well. But yeah, I'm uh, definitely going to make a few more things with the rest of the skein that I have right here. I will also li leave their information in the description as well. But to make it a little bit easier for you to follow all my stitches in the video, I'm going to be using this Universal Yarn Cotton Supreme. And this is going to be for the outline of the dragon scales. I think this might make it look a little bit like it's glowing from the inside. And then this one is Malabrigo Rios in Cowboy. Um, I want to make the scales using this very dark variegated purple color. I think that would look really cool. And it would still kind of go with my awesome dice collection here. So those are what I'm using. I'm also using my H hook, big, big surprise. This is a five millimeter and what I use for basically every single project. Oh, and before I forget, you can use any kind of yarn that you like. I particularly like using cotton for the very bottom circle 
and the reason why I pair it usually with wool, which this is a merino wool, um, I like the colors better, and I feel like the combination of the squishy wool and the cotton together kind of balance and give you a nice uh, structure without being too hard. But really, experiment with whatever you want, and you can also make these bags any size that you want. So if you want to use a DK instead of a worsted, go right ahead. You can adjust them to make them however big or small that you would like. In order to figure out how many stitches you need to start your circle on the very bottom, all you need to know is the number of stitches in one repeat. So this Dragon Scales pattern has a repeat of eight plus one. And so our very first circle here will have eight single crochet. And each one of these rounds represents one extra Dragon Scale. So for each round added to that circle, you are adding one repeat of the dragon scales. So for a pattern that has a plus one stitch, so this is eight plus one, all we would do is start with eight stitches in our first circle. And then on our last circle, we will add one extra stitch into the last stitch in order to add that extra one stitch in order to make this pattern almost invisible at the seam we only have one extra row here because of that plus one stitch. Other patterns that work well for a round base pouch will be between eight and 12 stitches in the repeat section. Any less than that, and it's actually going to start curving up and you're gonna have like a cup at the bottom. And any more than that, it's gonna start being a little bit wavy. So ideally, if you stay within the range of eight and 12 stitches in the repeat, that bottom circle will lay pretty flat on the bottom and it will look the best for a bag like this. And other patterns that work really well for adding to a round base are ones that have a separate motif, like this big skulls pattern. We only have one skull here and one skull on the other side, which means everything in between here is a blank stitch. And you can add or remove as many as you want in this section here to make it fit on the base for like, let's say this size. This one fits with nine extra stitches on both sides. Okay, so let's get started making this little dragon egg pouch. Okay, so let's start off with a circle. And if you want to do a magic circle, you can do that, but I find it's easy to just cast on and we're going to chain four and we are going to insert our hook into the first stitch here to the very first chain and slip stitch to join. And now we are going to add our first round into the circle in the very middle here. And because the Dragon Scales pattern has eight stitches in the repeat, we are going to add eight single crochet in the circle. And I'm also going to crochet over the tail as I'm doing this. And if you're adding a lot of stitches into this center circle, like if you're doing a pattern that has like 12 in the repeat, then you might be better off doing a magic circle just because you can put as many stitches as you want in there and then pull the tail to tighten it. But I usually don't have trouble getting all the stitches I want in this circle. And then we can pull it tight again by pulling this tail. And when we have eight single crochet in our circle, we're going to slip stitch to join into the very first stitch here. And what we could do is actually make a loop, insert our hook from the back, and this will make the bottom circle virtually seamless. But I find it's actually easier when we're doing the circle to just attach it from the front with a slip stitch. And yeah, you'll see a little bit of a seam. Let's see if I have an example here. Okay, so a quick little example you can see on the bottom of this one. This is where I connected each round from the front and you can kind of see that seam there. 
But again, this is on the bottom, so you're not really going to see it. And this one is attached from the back, so this seam is a little more invisible. And actually, when we get to the actual mosaic part of the bag, that's when we will be joining every round from the back, so the seam will be invisible. But it's entirely up to you if you want to continue doing the circle entirely from the front, or if you want to do it from the back to make it a little more invisible. I am going to do it from the front just because I find it a little bit easier to get our hook into the front on these tight little circles. So after we join this round, we are going to chain one. And our second round is going to be two single crochet in each stitch. And we are going into both loops for the entire circle. And our very first stitch is right at the base of our first chain here. So we're just going to add two single crochet into both loops of the first stitch. So one and two, and we're gonna continue all the way around. And we will have 16 single crochet, and then we will join again. And after we have 16 single crochet all the way around, at this point, if you wanted to stop and add the dragon scales to this, you would have two full dragon scales, and you would only need to add one extra stitch in this last stitch right here in order to add that plus one. So each round will just keep increasing by one dragon scale. Okay, so let's connect this round. This was the first chain, so the very first stitch is going to be right here. If you kind of pull it apart a little bit, you can see these two single crochets are in the very first stitch, so this is the one that we're going to slip stitch into. And then just chain one. And now we're gonna go back into that stitch to start round three. And round three will be two single in the same stitch followed by one single in one stitch. And we're going to repeat that pattern all the way around. So let's start with two in this stitch, the very first one at the base of the chain, one and two. And the next stitch is one stitch. The next stitch is two in the same stitch. Followed by one stitch. And we'll continue all the way around and we will connect again on this side. And after the third round, we should have 24 stitches. This round would fit three dragon scales. And let's join round three in the first stitch of the round. Join with a slip stitch and chain one. And then for round four, we will have two single in the same stitch, followed by one single and one single. Two, one, one, two, one, one, two, one, one. Nice and easy. So this first stitch will get two single in the same stitch. And then one single in the next stitch. And one single in the next stitch. And what I like to do to keep track of which stitches I need to be doing in each round is we're working round four. So what I do is I count the next stitch will be one. And then when I count two to myself, two represents two stitches in the same stitch. So our next one will go into the same stitch. So two and then three and four. Hope that makes sense. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And you repeat that pattern all the way around. And this round will actually fit four dragon scales around. And now we are ready to join round four. Once again, find that first stitch. And you see it is a little bit tight. That is why it's easier to go in from the front instead of the back because it is a little tricky when you're making these really tight. So we have round four joined. Don't forget to chain one. 
And now round five will be no surprise to you. It will start with two single in the same stitch followed by one, one, and one. So once again, two in the same stitch and then three in the next three stitches for five. So here we go, one, two is in the same stitch, number three is in the next stitch, number four is in the next stitch, and number five is in the next stitch. And then we repeat that pattern, the next stitch will get two in the same stitch, one, two, and then three, four, and five. And we will just repeat that all the way around and that will fit five dragon scales around. Okay, I've gone ahead and joined round five and I added my one chain. And now we are doing the final round, which will be round six because our little bag actually has six dragon scales all the way around. And just like all the other rounds, we're gonna start with two single in the same stitch. One, two, and because this is round six, the next four stitches will be in their own stitch. So one, two, and then we have three in the next stitch, four in the next, five in the next, and six. Then the next stitch will have two in the same stitch. One, two, and then stitch number three is in the next, four in the next, five in the next, and six. And we will continue that all the way around. We will join here and then we are ready to start the dragon scale pattern. Okay, so at the end of round six, when you are ready to start adding the dragon scale pattern, don't connect. We're gonna add one more stitch in the last stitch and that is going to be our plus one to complete the pattern. So now we will have 49 stitches around because we have eight stitches that we added six times and we have one extra stitch for the plus one. Now we can join the round, but we're actually not gonna join from the front. This time we are going to join from the back because we're going to be switching to the next color. So we'll pull out a little bit of a loop, take our hook out, and we are gonna join from this very first stitch here into both loops from the back. So we can just turn it this way and insert our hook into both loops of the first stitch like that, put the loop back on our hook and tighten it and we can slip stitch. And now we can turn it around and our hook is behind and that loop is behind this round so we're not gonna see any color changes, we're not gonna see a big seam, it'll all be hidden back here. And from now on we will always be joining from the back. And let's add our second color. This is the dark purple that I'm using. And while your hook is still connected here, you just need to cast on with the new color. If you want to do a slip knot and add it to your hook, you can do that. Or however you like casting on is fine. And when we have that ready to go on our hook, all we do is slip stitch like that. And make sure that that knot stays on the inside. And we are going to tighten the pink. And just like I said, make sure that that knot stays on the side. You don't want it to pull all the way through because then you will see it. So now we have uh, purple ready to go or whatever color you're using for color B. And this will actually become our scale color and the pink is going to be the outlines. 
And now we are ready to add row two of the chart because this last row right here of the circle actually counts as row one of the chart. So now we are going to add row two. Always start with one chain and we are beginning the round right, the stitch right in front of our hook right here, those two loops. We are now, from now on, only going into the back loops because now we are doing mosaic crochet. So single crochet all the way around. Actually, let's crochet over this tail so we don't have to deal with it later on. And we are gonna do back loops, single crochet all the way around and we're not adding any additional stitches. We have the exact amount of stitches that we need around in our circle. So we are just adding single crochet to the end and then I will show you again how to join this round. So just like this and crochet over the tail. And once you finish with round two, we are going to again join from the back. So we'll pull out a loop turn to the back and if you can see right here this is the first chain that we did which connected the new color to the old color that is not where we're putting our hook we're putting our hook right in this stitch here into both loops from the back and if you look at the front you can see where my hook is is the first stitch and not the chain at the corner here it becomes a lot easier to see as the pattern progresses. The beginning it's a little bit tricky to see, but it is right above the very first stitch in the front. So again, we just put our loop back on our hook and tighten it so we can easily slip stitch. And now we can turn around to the front and our hook is behind, which means we can now slip stitch back to pink from purple and tighten the purple in the back and we are ready to use our pink. And before we begin round three or row three of the chart, always chain one, and our very first stitch will be right here, right in front of the hook. And the very first stitch is a single crochet, so let's go ahead and add that in there. I have the chart at the top of the screen if you'd like to follow along. If you already have the pattern, this is exactly the same as the Dragon Scales pattern. The next stitch is a single. And then we are beginning our first decrease, which starts with a single crochet stitch. So our decrease will go in these two stitches here. We'll start with a single because that is the D with the line above it. And then directly below that single crochet stitch right here is where our decrease will begin. So insert our hook into that first stitch and start our double crochet. And then we'll go into the next stitch, start another double crochet. And when we have three loops on our hook, we are finishing that decrease. And that is what that stitch looks like. I am going to move a little bit quickly because we do have a lot of repeat stitches in this pattern. There are a lot of decreases and several diagonals, which I've gone over in previous videos. But if you're new, um, I would say just checking out the special stitches video because I do go a little bit slower with that one and I explain why all of the stitches look the way they look. But yeah, there is our first decrease stitch. The next stitch in the chart is a double crochet. So in the next one down here, we'll add our double. I accidentally pulled a little loop on that one, but that'll get covered up with the next stitch here. In the next two stitches, we have another decrease, which ends with a single crochet. So let's add our decrease in starting in the next stitch and then start another DC in the next stitch. And work the stitch until you have three loops left and we are joining that decrease. So we have two DCs joined into one and we are finishing the decrease with a single crochet directly above this very last stitch here. And it happens to be in the one that I accidentally pulled. 
So good, we'll be camouflaging that one right up. So there's our single, and that is what those gr that group of stitches looks like. It's a decreases that go in towards each other with one double crochet in the middle. The next three stitches are single crochet, so let's add those in. One, two, and three. And then we will add another decrease starting with a single crochet, another double crochet in here, and then another decrease that ends with a single crochet. So I'm going to pop that in here real quick. Start with a single, add our first decrease in the next two stitches. Then our DC after that. And then another decrease in the next two stitches as well. And that little fluffiness that's sticking up in the back is the tail from the previous row which will be hidden in one second. And that decrease with a single crochet, because that's where the line is. And there is our next set of decreases with a DC in the middle. And we're gonna continue that all the way around for round three of the chart. And I am just about at the end of round three and I have two stitches remaining. And if you look at the chart, those are just two single crochet to get to the end. And we are ready to join round three and begin round four. So just one more time, I will show you how I join from the back, pull out a loop, turn it around and find that very first stitch. And we're going into both loops. And you can kind of look from the front and make sure that that is the very first stitch. And then we just slip stitch the pink closed, pull that through, turn it back around, and we are ready to switch back to purple. So we just slip stitch the purple, tighten the pink, and chain one, and our very first stitch will be directly in front of that hook there. And for the remaining rounds, I'm just gonna go ahead and connect them so you don't have to watch me connect it every single time. So let's start with round four. And in the chart, round four is three double crochet, three single crochet, five double crochet, three single, and so on and so on. So let's add our first three double crochet, which is directly in front of the hook here, into the purple. Here's one double, and then the next stitch is another double, and then our third double crochet stitch looks like it's not there, but it is. It is hiding in a hidden stitch next to the decrease. So let's add that next DC in here, and then we have our three DCs right there. Next three stitches on the top here are single crochet. So one, two, three. And then we have five double crochet. If you push these two stitches aside, you will see one, two, three, four, five stitches for our DCs to go into. So let's add those. And we are just continuing all the way around. Three single, five double, three single, five double. And then the very last three stitches right here, one's hidden, will be three double crochet at the end right there. And I will see you for round five. And here's what the end of round four looks like. I've gone ahead and connected it. I am so excited about these colors. <laughs> Uh, I think this purple looks so cool. Doesn't it match my nails? <laughs> I don't know. Little things in life make me super happy, especially awesome colors that look really good together. Anyway, uh, let's start round five and don't forget to chain one before you start a round. And round five has three single crochet 
And then in here we have a DC decrease centered. So let's start with our two single crochet. One, two, and three. And just like the other decrease, we're gonna start with a single crochet because that's where the line is. So one single, and then directly below it, we're gonna start our decrease. So work the stitch until you have two on your hook. We're skipping the next stitch. The third stitch here is where we're adding our next DC, and we are working the stitch until we have three on our hook. And then we are pulling through all three and finishing with one single crochet on top of, well, right behind that last decrease stitch. And that is what that stitch looks like. So it's two pulled together with a single crochet behind both of those stitches. And in the next five stitches, we have single crochet. And then we will have another decrease centered in that point area as well. So here are our five, and let's quickly add another DC decrease centered here, so you can see what that looks like. And start in the first stitch, skip the next one, start in the third stitch, pull through all three, and single crochet directly above the last one. And we are going to continue that sequence all the way around, adding those decreases in the points here. And I'll see you on this side. And at this point, the <laughs> circle is no longer a circle. It's curving up. And that's exactly what we want to happen. And it's a lot easier if we flip it this way. So now this is the very bottom, and now we can work easily on the top rows here and just work that all the way around. So this is what round five looks like all done, and we are ready to start round six, which is another very easy row. It's going to be all DCs and a few singles. Start the round with a chain first and then we are doing four double crochet. So one, two, three, and the fourth one will be hiding behind this decreased stitch right here. So let's add those four right here. One, two, three, and four is in there. And the next stitch is a single right at the top of that decrease that we did in the previous row. And then in here we have seven double crochet, starting with a hidden one and ending with a hidden one. So just fill in all of these stitches with DCs. And then the next stitch is a single on the top of the decrease, and we will continue that sequence all the way around. Seven DCs, one single, seven DCs, one single. And then this part ends with four DCs at the very end before you connect. And here's what round six looks like. You can see the scale starting to form. And we are ready to start round seven, which is a very easy round. Um, yes, I've already switched. And we just need to chain one to start this round. And round seven is all single crochet, except for at the very top of these points, these get DCs. So let's add those in there. First, it's four single up to that point, so two, three, and four, and at that point there, 
there's two loops there. I usually just grab the one behind and we will add a DC right here. Just like that. And then we have seven single. Just add stitches across the top of these DCs until we get to the next point, which will be where our DC goes. And we'll just add our DC on top of the pink here. And we will continue that sequence all the way around and I will see you for round eight. And here's what round seven looks like. Nice and easy. Pretty little points at the top. And let's start with round eight. And we will chain one and round eight has decreases again. The very first stitch is a DC. So right in front of the hook, we'll add our DC down here. And then we will add a decrease in the next two stitches and that one ends with a single crochet. So let's add our decrease in these two stitches. And the single will go above the last stitch. The next three stitches are single crochet in the top back loops. And then we have another decrease. This one starts with a single crochet because that's where the line is. So we'll add that single and put our decrease in these two stitches here. So I'll just put that one in. Those two stitches are together. Next stitch is a double right in the middle of that dragon scale. And then we have another decrease just like the beginning of the row. This one ends with a single crochet. So in these two stitches, we will add that and add our single right above that. And we are repeating the pattern or continuing the pattern with three single crochet. Then we have the decrease, double, decrease, three single, and so on. So I will add those stitches in here and see you for round nine. And here's what the end of that round looks like. And we are ready to start round nine. And now we have diagonal stitches in round nine, which we will be connecting to the tops of these well, the bottoms of the lines of the scales. So you'll see that design kind of come together. Oh, we start with a chain. And the very first stitch in round nine is a single right in front of the hook. One single, and then we have a diagonal down, which is a skip. And then we are adding a DC into this hidden stitch here, followed by a single directly above it. So let's put that in here. There's our diagonal down, a single right above it. Just like that. Next three stitches are single. One, two, and three. Then we have a diagonal up, which again will go into this hidden stitch here. Diagonal up starts with a single crochet and double goes directly below it in this hidden stitch. And then we are skipping the next stitch. So the top of this decrease right here is a little hard to see because this all of a sudden the yarn got really dark, but we're skipping this stitch and our next stitch will be this uh, double crochet stitch right at the top. This will be a single right at the top there. 
And then we are going directly into our next diagonal down. So we are again skipping the top of this decreased stitch and we're putting a DC in this hidden stitch right here. So we'll add our DC in there with a single right above it. So you can kind of see the wave happening. We go down and then we go up and then we go down. Next is three single and then we will go up again with another diagonal up which is single, double, skip. And then we add the single crochet right at the top of the DC and we will continue that all the way around to the other side. And here's what the end of round nine looks like. And we are ready to start round 10. And this round is another super easy one with lots of DCs and single crochet and no special stitches to think about. So the very first stitch in round 10 is a DC right in front of the hook down here. And the next stitch is a single right back up here. Then we have five double crochet in down in here. So two of them are in hidden stitches on the inside here. Let's add those five in there. One, two, three, four, and five. Just like that. Next stitch is a single, which is at the top of this diagonal. One single. Next stitch is a double crochet or DC down here. Right in the middle. Next is a single. And then we have our five double crochet in here again, and we will continue that all the way around. But yeah, this is what the end of round 10 looks like. And we are ready to start round 11. So round 11 starts with a diagonal down and then when we start repeating the pattern, then that diagonal, which is only at the beginning and very end of the row, will have those decreased stitches with the skip in the middle. That's where all of those will be added. But let's start the row with a diagonal down, skip the first stitch, DC down here, and add a single directly above it. And we have five single crochet across here. And now we're ready to add that DC decrease centered again, which is exactly what we did down here. And you'll see that this is now the stitch in the middle that we're skipping. So we're gonna start with a single and the decrease is gonna be in this pink stitch and this pink stitch on that side. So let's start our DC, skip the middle stitch. Next one's gonna be over here, start another DC. And when we have three, we pull them all together and we will add our single crochet directly above that last stitch. And there is our DC decrease centered. And what you're seeing on the very beginning of the row is basically one of these stitches split in half. So if you look at it, that's basically what a diagonal down looks like. And this is what a diagonal up looks like. But we're combining them together for each of these corners right here. These little pointy parts here. 
So after we have the DC decrease centered in there, we have another five single crochet across before we get to another DC decrease centered. <laughs> and we will continue that all the way around. And here we go for another DC decrease centered that goes into these two stitches right here. And when you get to the very last two stitches of round 11, that's what we'll have our diagonal up. So again, that's a single with a double crochet directly below it. And then we are skipping the very last stitch. We're skipping that to finish the diagonal up. And we're just gonna go ahead and join that round. So when you are skipping the very last stitch, you're just gonna join it right after. And that is what round 11 looks like. And that is what the seam looks like for this round. Okay, and now round 12 looks very familiar because we've done the exact same thing down here. These are just all double crochet stitches in here. So with this one, we are starting with a single crochet in the very first stitch. And in all seven of these stitches will be double crochet. And then we have a single crochet at the top of the decrease. And then again in here, don't forget these are the hidden stitches in there, another seven double crochet. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those off camera because you've already watched me do those for the rows down here and they're exactly the same. And here's what the end of round 12 looks like. And we are ready to begin round 13 with another very easy round that we've already done the same down here. So this round is all single crochet stitches except for at the top of these points here is where we will add our double crochet stitches. So this round begins with a double crochet right at the top here. All singles, which will be seven across and then a double crochet right here. And again, I'm gonna do that one off camera and this one will also end with a double crochet. So you'll have two double crochet right next to each other at the beginning and end of the round. And here's round 13 done. Here's what the seam side looks like. And we are ready to work on round 14, which will look exactly like this row right here where we have the decrease, double crochet, and a decrease and then three single crochet. So the first two stitches in round 14 are single crochet. We'll add those in. And then this is where the two decreases and the double crochet in the very center, that's where those will go. So let's start our decrease with one single crochet and begin the decrease directly below that stitch. So here is our decrease for that first stitch there. Next is DC. And then another DC decrease that ends with a single because that is where the line is. the second D. Just like that. Next three single. And I'm going to continue the rest of this round off camera. And then again, these five stitches will have decrease, double crochet in the middle, and another decrease. And I'll see you for the end of this round. And here's round 14 added in. And that's what the seam side looks like. And we are ready to add round 15. This is also 
the diagonal row like we did down here. Lots of uppets and downs, nice and easy. So the first two stitches are single. And then we have our first diagonal, which will go in this hidden stitch here. We have a single with a double directly below it. We are skipping the next stitch, so the single crochet will go at the very top where that DC is from the previous round, just like we did down here. And then we have a diagonal down immediately after that, so skip the next stitch, DC in this stitch here, and then followed by a single directly above it. And then we have three single crochet, and then up, down, three single, up, down three single all the way around. So here's what round 15 looks like all finished. Right, basically exactly the same as we had down here in row nine. And we are ready to do round 16, which is another very easy round, which is exactly the same as row 10, where we are adding double crochet and single crochet with no special stitches. So let's start this round. Round 16 is a three double crochet, so one, two, and three is in here. I'll add that in here real quick. Two and three. Then we have one single, one double, one single. So that double crochet stitch is right in the middle, just like we had down here. And then the next five stitches in here are DCs, just like down here and just like down here. So we are just repeating this over and over again. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in and I'll see you for the next round. And here we have round 16 all done. And round 17 I'm actually going to do entirely off camera because it is exactly the same as row 5 which we already did down here with these stitches. And so those are just the decreases right in here. So I'm going to put those in and I will be right back. Okay, so here's round 17 all done and we are at the end of the chart, which means we are ready to repeat the chart again. And we're going to begin from row six on the chart. So after 17, we're gonna go back to row six, which will look just like this row down here where we have all of these are double crochet stitches. So at this point, I am going to crochet the rest of this off camera because all of the rows repeat. And if you want to go back to row six in the chart and start over again, I'll leave a link to the timestamp so you don't have to find that again in the video, but that'll be in the description so you can easily go back to that point there. So to make the back higher, rows six through 17 can be added as many times as you want. You can make this a long, long, long tube and just keep going over and over and over again if you want to. So in order for this bag to be the same height as this bag over here, we go up to row 13 and then we will stop at row 13 and add our loops at the top here for our drawstring. But again, if you want to go a little bit higher, a little bit lower, totally up to you. I'm going to go up to row 13 and I will see you back for the top of the bag. Okay, here's my dragon scale pouch all finished. I added rows six through 13, and that's where I finished up here. And now we can actually cut the scale color because we are not gonna be using it anymore. So just to make it easier and get it out of the way, we don't have to work with that anymore. So I'm just gonna leave a little tail in here and I'm going to tie this and weave it in at the very end. 
So we're not switching colors. We're going to keep the same color on our hook and we are going to work the next round which will start adding the holes for our drawstring. So after you join that round you're just going to chain one and we are going to begin this round with two single crochet, two chains and skip two stitches so that's going to be where our hole is. Then we're going to do one single crochet in the middle, then chain two, skip two, then three single crochet, chain two, skip two, one single, and so on and so on. So let's get those stitches in here. And now we are actually working through both loops because we're no longer doing the mosaic crochet portion. So let's start with two single crochet, one, two, and then the next is chain two, and we are skipping two stitches here. One, two, skip two. The next stitch will be a single, and that'll be directly in the middle of the scale here. So one single. Then chain two, skip two. We're skipping those two stitches, and we're adding three single crochet right at the top of the point here. So one, two, and three. And we are just going to keep continuing. Chain two, skip two. Skip those two. Single crochet in the middle of the scale. So one. Then chain two, skip two. And we're adding three single at the point here. One, two, and three, and we are going to continue that sequence all the way around. So you'll see we have two holes at the top of each scale here, and we're going to continue, and this stitch at the very end here will be two single crochet to the seam. So I'm going to go ahead and put those stitches in and I'll meet you on the other side. And before we finish the top here, I wanted to show you another option for a drawstring at the top. Like this one has the top kind of looks like four little folds right here, which is kind of cute. This one that we're doing right here has a lot more holes, so it ends up pulling together and we'll have like six folds together for the top of the bag like this. So it's up to you if you want to do it with multiple folds like the uh, original one that we did over there or if you want to have less folds and have kind of like a, the top come close like that. Then in order to do that you're going to start the row with one single crochet and then chain three, skip three, and then three single crochet, chain three, skip three, three single crochet, chain three, skip three, all the way around. And then when you get to the seam, you will have two single crochet left and you'll join. And that is how you make the bag close that way if you'd like. So now let's continue working this one. The next round is going to be all single crochet in each stitch all the way around, both loops. And then when you get to the chain spaces, we're just going to add two single crochet in the chain space instead of working it into the chains itself. So always start with a chain. We're going to just add single crochet all the way around. The first two are in two stitches and then when we have this chain space here, again we're just going to go right in the chain space, add one and two. And then the next stitch is a single right in that on top of that other single crochet and then we have in the chain space again one and two and we're just going to keep going all the way around single crochet in every stitch in both loops and I will meet you on the other end. So this is what the end of the second round for the eyelets in here. That's what that looks like. We're going to add one more round, all single crochet stitches 
both loops all the way around just to finish the edge and I will meet you at the very end. All right, so right here I've joined the final round. All we we'll need to do is chain one and pull down to tighten it and we can cut our yarn and pull through. And we can turn it into the inside here so we can take care of these two little tail ends real quick. What I like to do is just take this top tail right here and weave it through a few stitches along the seam here just to bring it down close to the other tail end which is all the way down here. So I'm just going to weave this in a little bit till we get close to there. So thread your needle and then you can thread it through the eye and pull it through. So now these two tail ends are right next to each other and we can make a square knot and tie these two together to secure them in place. And then we can weave them along the inside to hide them. And that is all we need to do with these tails. Okay, and that takes care of the bag base. And we are ready to make a couple of drawstrings to weave into the top here. So if you want to use the cotton yarn for the drawstring, you can do that. The other bags I actually used wool for the drawstring, but when you use wool, it ends up stretching a whole lot. Um, so keep that in mind. You might want to make them a little bit smaller when you're using wool and maybe a little bit bigger if you're using cotton. But just because there's a little more contrast here, so I can show you a little bit easier, I am going to use the wool yarn here to make my drawstrings. And for these, all I simply do is make chains. I'm going to cast on. So I say around 75 chains is a good length for the drawstring pouches that are this size. So you can kind of see the length is almost double the width of the top of the bag. So I'm going to go ahead and chain 75. And here are my 75 chains. And all I'm going to do is cut it and leave maybe about three or four inches of tail pull through. And before we attach those two, we are going to weave this through the bag. So look for the seam. We want to have one of the drawstrings come out these two holes here and then directly on the other side, the complete opposite side on this side, we want the other drawstring to come out this hole as well so therefore you can cinch them both from the seam side and then the opposite side. So let's go ahead and start at the seam. We are going to weave this in front to back and then back through the front and then the next hole front to back and the next hole comes out the front. We're not going to go all the way around. We're going to stop at the halfway point here and we're going to start using the other side. So in again and out again. And let's take a look how far we are. So I'm going to stop. Don't continue. We're going to now we're at the seam again. We're going to do the same for this side. Start weaving through here. We're going to go in and out and into the next one and out and in and out. And here we are at the other side where these tail ends meet. So now we're going to take these two tail ends and we're going to 
make a square knot right at the very end here where the chain begins. This is where we're going to make a square knot there to join these two together. So over under, right at the end there. And just tighten it up. So this is what that looks like on this side here. Just like that. And now we're just going to weave this tail end into the chain that way and this tail end into the chain going this way. So once again, the easiest way to do that is to just weave your needle in first. Don't thread the eye just yet, but go through a few inches of this chain to really get it in all the way in there. I'm just kind of wrapping around the edge there. That's good enough for that side. And we're just going to take this tail and thread the needle and pull it through and you can kind of pull it and see we're going to have this little tail end thing here we'll wait until we're done well, let's do this side and again just kind of weave your needle into this chain on this side doesn't really matter where we're just trying to hide the tail end so it is hidden and out of the way that's pretty good here. We're just going to thread the needle, pull it all the way through, just like that. And now pull it to tighten it so you can kind of see that this will end up pulling the tail a little further into the chain. Same with this side. And you can trim any excess pieces that are sticking out. But just with use, I know that these tail ends are going to end up sticking out again. So my best suggestion to you would be to add a little drop of glue right here, like fabric glue, tacky glue, anything to kind of make sure that this tiny little tail end thing right here doesn't keep popping out. Because just with use, it's going to end up popping out. So we have our knot on this side here. We want these to be hidden in the drawstring area, so we're going to find the other side where we started. Go to the seam side, and we are just going to pull. So now these are hiding in here. And now we are going to make another drawstring exactly the same way. We're going to chain 75, and I will show you how to weave those through as well. Okay, now I have my other chain all done here. So now when we're taking our bag, this is the side with the seam. We wanna find the opposite side now. So this side right here is where we're going to start weaving in our second chain. And we're going to do that over the top of the first chain. So right in through here, we're gonna go to the back and through the front in the same direction that the other chain is going in. So just find the next hole. We're going to go in and out through the next hole. And we're going to keep weaving until we get to the seam side. And at that point, we're going to stop. So one more in one more out just like that and we're going to stop this is where you should stop on yours just like that and we're going to go around again and weave this side in starting right at the top here so just like we did on this side we're going to square knot these two ends together just like the other side weave these tails in put a little drop of glue so they don't pop out as you're using them okay so i wove in the tail ends on that side so now all we need to do is pull that one over 
And like magic, we have the top of our bag done. I love how that pulls together so nice and neat like that. And then you can just kind of tie it to keep it shut. And you now have two handles as well. So I hope you've enjoyed making this little dragon egg pouch. And if you have any suggestions of other videos that you would like to see or other projects that you would like to work on, um, let me know in the comments. I'd love to know what you guys are interested in. And also, if you just have any general questions, maybe I'll do a Q&A video at some point. Um, I am actually doing some traveling this spring. Um, I'll be heading to Chicago. And then I have a bunch of yarn festivals coming up, like one after the other. So it's going to be a very busy spring and into summer. And then my son graduates high school, which is absolutely crazy. Um, I, yeah, this is, this is going to be a wild year. So I'm not really sure what videos are going to be doing just yet, but... We'll see. Maybe I'll do a travel video. I don't know. <laughs> It'll be an interesting one. But anyway, hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you for the next one. Thank you so much for watching.